Hello guys, Chris here. Welcome back to another video with this one, my friends. I'm going to be testing the Intel Arc A770 in Horizon Forbidden West. This one is the Intel Limited Edition reference design, and we're running it with the latest Intel drivers. You can see it right here in Tech Power Up's GPU Z as well, and it's the 16 gigabyte model, which will come in handy in this game. Over on the left, we're pairing it with a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with half of its cores disabled, so it's basically the same as Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 MHz RAM in dual channel. Let's get into it! Shall we? All right, let's go for the settings first. I'm starting at the 1080p resolution using TAA and the highest settings here, aside from motion blur, vignette, and chromatic aberration. And oh boy, okay, so this is a little bit worse performance than I was expecting, guys, but at least we're not running out of VRAM, right? <laughs> Even with the very high textures here, it's using around 10 gigabytes of VRAM and allocating around 12 gigabytes, just a little bit below those values. And and, uh, yeah, it's getting 40-ish frames per second in one of the most intensive areas in the entire game, which is not bad, but still, at the same time, I was expecting a little bit better performance coming from the A770. You know, like, this GPU is usually close in performance to the RTX 3060 Ti, and that GPU at 1080p high settings, with high textures as well, because, well, we can't really use very high textures in that card. It's an 8GB GPU, and it would run out of VRAM. But yeah, that card didn't really drop from 60fps at 1080p high settings and even though we're playing on very high right now with the arc a770 this is not usually that much more intensive than high settings guys okay so even at high settings it should still be below 60 fps on average sometimes you can get 60s you know it already touched 60 fps here uh, briefly but it's a little bit underwhelming performance but it's fine i guess considering you know it's, it's the first intel architecture for GPUs, actual dedicated GPUs, and... <sighs> All right, I, I will give them a little bit of a break, okay? Maybe the drivers <laughs> aren't really uh, properly optimized for this game yet, for the ARC stuff, but the game has been out for a couple of weeks already, so... Yeah. <laughs> also, if you're wondering, resizable bar is enabled. That's a very important thing here on Arc GPUs as well. And if you disable it, you lose a ton of performance. But yeah, that's not why we're getting like 45 FPS average. I guess it kind of makes sense. Some games actually will run a lot worse on Arc than they do on like the 3060 Ti and RX 6700 XT. Actually, a lot of games that I've tested on this GPU uh, shows it performing closer to an RTX 3060 than the 30. 3060 Ti, despite a lot of people saying that this performs like a 3070, so yeah, I, I have not been seeing that, okay? <laughs> it kind of makes sense to see this performance here, I, I was just expecting a little bit better. That's usually the norm in the Intel Arc GPU videos that I make. <laughs> I'm usually expecting that a little bit better, because a lot of people are hyping it up and stuff. I shouldn't really ride the hype train. With the performance that we just got, I think it makes sense to drop the settings instead of increasing the resolution right away. So I'm going to use the high settings preset, but I'm going to keep the very high textures because we got 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And if you paid for 16 gigabytes of VRAM in this GPU, you might as well use all of it and increase the uh, graphics settings or the texture settings, actually. Everything else is the same right here on the high preset. I just touched those two and I'm going to restart the game fully and play again. And this is it, guys. This is the high settings preset with very high textures and the anisotropic filtering set to 16 times. And it's basically the same as very high settings. I told you, it, it doesn't really differ by that much in terms of FPS when you drop things down from very high to high. Maybe we're getting like one or two more FPS, but it's not noticeable, really. The experience overall is going to be basically the same, so I guess you might as well just play on very high, because it's going to look a little bit prettier, right? Yeah, <laughs> down into the 30s right here. Oh, boy. Also, why is it only consuming around 150 to 160 watts? This is a much more power hungry than that GPU right? Like, this is weird. <laughs> Maybe at 4K resolution it will eat a little bit more power. I've seen it with other GPUs at 1080p. It doesn't usually max out the power utilizations of the cards, but 
it's kind of weird anyways to see it so much lower. Actually, I'm, I'm going to try it at 4K just for a second here to see if the power utilization increases because, again, it just seems way too low to me. Maybe it's, again, the driver issues or whatever. FPS are very low, obviously, to be expected, and GPU utilization is at 99% still with around 180 watts of power, so it's using like 20 watts more than at 1080p resolution. Still nowhere near the 225 watts that it should be utilizing which is really really weird once again guys okay so we're back to 1080p resolution guys using TAA and the very high textures with high settings and I restarted the PC this time around just to make sure that everything resets properly and uh, well it's still the same I yeah, you can expect like 40 to 50 FPS in intensive areas, basically, if you play with these settings, okay? Anyway, I'm trying another little area right here, which is very, very slightly less intensive, as you can see, touching 50-something FPS, uh, almost 60s, you know? That's not too bad, but again... A 3060 Ti would be getting like 60 plus around here and even back in the Burning Shores area it was doing a much better job. I really think it comes down to the drivers here in this one guys because it, the RK770 isn't even utilizing full power, right? Like it can only be down to some software issues or maybe the game not being optimized for it, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm running the latest drivers obviously, I double checked, triple checked <laughs> that I am running them and uh, this is what we get. Good thing is, it doesn't really stutter or anything, even though 1% loads are in the 30s, it didn't really drop into the 30s, and it is overall a smooth experience, and I can definitely recommend you to buy this game if you have the ARC A770. And over here, by the way, you can clearly see that the VRAM usage is way lower than it was back in the Burning Shores area, that's why stuff like the 3060 Ti um, do struggle quite a lot more there instead of here. I wouldn't really drop it down to medium settings it will give us like 10 more fps so the averages would get higher up into like the 60s sometimes but it just looks a little bit too bad comparing to high or very high settings high are very similar to very high both in visuals and performance but medium is a little bit of a drop off again, so I wouldn't really do that. Now, we have the option to utilize dynamic resolution scaling right here, targeting 60 frames per second, and oh my god, it looks very bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, since the FPS at 1080p weren't reaching 60, it's now dynamically adjusting the resolution to reach 60 FPS. But yeah, dropping down from like 4K resolution is a good experience and it looks good usually. Well, if you're not getting like 20 FPS, obviously, then it will lower the resolution scale by quite a lot and make it look very pixelated. But here at 1080p, it's already a low resolution by today's standards and... Using the RS at this res, it doesn't really make it pretty. It's very, very pixelated. Even if I stand still right here, which improves the image quality a little bit compared to when it's moving, you know, there's more pixelation when it's moving. But you can see clearly, even on YouTube probably with the compression, that it's rough. So I'm going to disable the DRS right here and use some upscaling. Oh my god, look at the difference there. TAA versus FSR2 on quality. And this is with uh, the sharpening set to zero, right? Yep, <laughs> it's so over sharpened. Oh wait, now it looks good actually. All right. Uh, yeah, but not when you start moving. When you start moving, things become really pixelated, guys. And super, super noisy with FSR, so... I wouldn't use FSR, but the good thing is, this game has XESS, and XESS is the Intel's upscaler, which works pretty well with Intel GPUs, and it looks quite a bit better than FSR in this game. There is a bit of ghosting going around in, like, particles and stuff like that, which kind of reminds me of, like, the first implementations of the LSS and FSR as well, FSR 2 in particular in Cyberpunk. It still has motion blur in Cyberpunk, can you believe that? All of these years later, they still haven't fixed it but anyways <laughs> uh yeah this looks basically the same as native resolution maybe a little bit worse you know maybe just slightly softer but i can't really tell much of a difference and now it's consistently in the 50s instead of dropping into like the 40s i think and i guess if i was playing this game with the rk770 at 1080p resolution maybe i would choose these settings because 
you know, I can't really get 60 FPS without majorly sacrificing the visuals, unfortunately. So let me just use high settings here with good visuals, close to native resolution visuals here with the XCSS Ultra quality and uh, yeah, have fun like that. In some other areas you're gonna see 60 FPS, like right here for example, it's at 60. In the beginning of the game it's also a little bit less intensive than these areas right here that I'm testing, so overall it's probably gonna be like a 60 FPS experience on average throughout the entire game, which it's fine, it feels all right, especially without the stuttering, and it looks amazing, of course, using the high settings here. All right, so I just restarted the game again, and I'm playing at 1080p TAA, using the high preset with high textures and four times an isotropic here, so no very high textures, this is the same settings that I tested the 3060 Ti with, and it's gonna be a more apples to apples comparison, you know, because the textures usually drop the FPS by quite a bit, but apparently, not really. It's getting the same, exactly the same FPS right here, guys. High settings with high textures. This is a high preset, basically. So it's a good 15 FPS or more um, lower than the RTX 3060 Ti, for sure. Like, 100%. Very unfortunate once again, but it is what it is. Okay, now that we know for sure that the texture quality and the isotropic don't really impact FPS, I set it to the medium settings preset, all right, but I kept these two the same. It should still look good, but we will lose a lot of detail. We're at 1080p still, TAA, let's see how it does. And it's good enough to reach 60 sometimes, as you can see, like 60 FPS right there, but unfortunately, it still drops down into the 50s very often, and I think it will still drop down into the 40s at times. Over here, 50 something, yep, 50 flat, 49, there we go, it's dropping into the 40s already. <sighs> Again, Underwhelming, but I guess I should have seen it coming. <laughs> I should test this card more often so I know what to expect more often. Anyways, that was one of the most intensive areas in the entire game and it only drops down to like 47 or so, 46 maybe. So safe to say that it's gonna be a good experience. I mean, it was already a good enough experience at high settings. It's not 60 plus yet. Unfortunately for that, I guess you'd need to drop it down to like low. And I'm not gonna drop it down to like low because <laughs> this game deserves to be played at medium or high or very high. And let's check it out in this area right now. 60 FPS flat right there, still dipping down into the 50s at times on medium settings, but it's not a bad experience again. Like, it's gonna be like this most of the time in the, the big map, you know? And this is slightly more intensive than the average FPS that you're gonna see in the entire game, actually, in the entire map. This area has a lot of agitation, it has a lot of NPCs around here, a lot of, like, textures and stuff like that. Um, and it's getting like 64 FPS on average. It already dipped down into the 50s, but it's not the end of the world. The game's still looking great, of course. Again, you're losing a bit of detail on the, the ground and stuff like that, the lighting, the shadow quality because of medium settings, but it still looks really damn impressive, right? Like, compared to... What the hell just happened? Did it just crash on me? No, that was just a massive spike, and the 1% lows now are at zero. What is going on? Maybe some driver issues or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was terrible, but okay. Yeah, feel free to buy the game if you have this GPU. The drivers kind of work with it. There are no graphical issues or anything. Sometimes we see that with other games with the Arc GPUs. Um, but yeah, over here, it's all good. All right, aside from that huge stutter, that was probably just a one-off. I haven't really seen it happen any single time. <laughs> now, if you wanted even more FPS, you could utilize some XCSS on ultra quality, of course, looking very, very similar to native resolution. And, well, it's probably gonna give us like five more FPS or so. Uh, not really, it's only giving us like two more FPS. Is it worth it to get two more FPS in a slightly softer image? I'm not sure if it is, guys. <laughs> It is enough to put us above 60 FPS most of the time right here instead of dropping to like 58 and 59 Now it drops to like 62 and 61 and 60 as you can see. So it's a little bit more stable for sure I mean, maybe this is worth it actually because on a smaller 1080p monitor You might actually not even notice the 
um, the little bit of softness introduced by XESS Ultra Quality right here, and it will probably look good and feel a little bit better, so... There's that, my friends, okay? This is probably how I'd end up playing this game, guys, because it is 60 plus right now, most of the time. Obviously, in the other area, it's not gonna be 60 plus. Yeah, there we go, but it's close enough. Yeah, okay. And this is only in the DLC once again, so you're gonna be fine in the main game. It's gonna be 60 plus FPS most of the time, and then here, 45 plus. The same 45 plus still keeps dropping into the mid 40s. Let's try 1440p with the medium settings and very high textures, I guess. Just for fun, I don't really recommend you to do this, but I know some people who are playing with this GPU at 1440p, so it might be worth checking out for those people. It's getting around the same FPS as like high to very high settings at 1080p resolution. So it's gonna be a similar experience to that and it's gonna look way better on a 1440p monitor, of course, because that's a way higher resolution than 1080p. 78% higher, to be exact. Yeah, I know, it doesn't seem like much. 1080p to 1440p, how did, why didn't you open the freaking parachute alloy? Come on, let's go. <laughs> but it is quite a bit of a difference, okay? There we go, you really like to drop the, the parachute and, and drop down and roll around. Yeah, interesting stuff, Alloy, interesting stuff. Down into the high 30s sometimes, 40s, low 40s. Yeah, it's exactly the same as very high settings at 1080p, but now it's medium at 1440. Again, enabling XCSS will make things slightly blurrier. It might be worth doing, I know for sure that it is not worth doing in the initial part of the game at least because when you start the game there are a lot of particle effects flying around and there's a lot of ghosting around them with the XCSS enabled so I guess in those areas it's definitely worth disabling XCSS and just playing with native resolution since we just get like two more FPS by enabling the XCSS on ultra quality anyways right so yeah, it's gonna be a little bit better visually speaking with TAA instead of XCSS, so that's what I'd go for. And it's getting like 37 plus FPS 100% of the time, so it's a good experience overall. You could lock it to like 40 or 45 frames per second if you require a little bit more consistent of an experience, you know. And it would also flatten out that frame time graph, I'm gonna showcase that actually. Because <laughs> if you've been seeing the frame time graph, he's a little bit weird usually, but if you lock it to 45 frames per second here, it just becomes a flat line and it's way more consistent. There isn't any micro stuttering anymore. Not that I could notice micro stuttering happening previously, but it's just more consistent like this. And add a little bit of motion blur, maybe play with a controller at the same time. It's gonna look great with medium settings and very high textures. And it's gonna be a super stable experience. Probably better than a console experience, honestly. Of course, console, the PS5, runs the game at a higher resolution and uh, around the same settings, actually. So there's that, but it also locks it to 30 frames per second on the quality mode. Well, let's unlock the FPS again, guys, and let's play at 4K resolution with medium settings. This is it, very high textures still, but it's not running out of VRAM, even at 4K resolution. And it is down into the 20s, guys. There is not much that we can do to save the little RK770 at 4K resolution. Maybe use some DRS. You know what? I'm gonna enable that and restart the game because I didn't really restart it here. Uh, there we go, 30 FPS targeting. And if you must play at the 4K resolution, this is definitely the way to go. It's gonna get 30 to 33 FPS all of the time. It is obviously lowering the internal resolution as well. The hair on the alloy looks a little bit weird and a bit pixelated because of it, but it is what it is, guys. It's it's not a bad experience here, and it still looks all right because we're upscaling to 4K resolution or downscaling from 4K resolution. That's it. Now I'm curious to see if we lock it to 30 FPS, will we get a, a flat frame time? Yeah, there we go. So this is definitely the way to go if you want to play at 30 frames per second. Just lock it to 30 using Rivetuner Statistics Server, because the frame time becomes really flat right there, as you can see. And previously I was running around up there and it, it felt quite stuttery. 
not because of 30 FPS being too low, but it, it actually felt quite a bit stuttery, guys, because of the frame time being a little bit more inconsistent than usual. I guess the lower the FPS you get, the more inconsistent the frame time will be in terms of micro stuttering, basically. Now, with 30 FPS locked, this is great. This is actually not a bad experience. We're still on the medium settings, so PS5-like quality. And on my huge 42-inch TV that I'm playing on right now, it looks okay. All right, guys, that's been it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in the next one. Love you all. Bye-bye.